Boston mayoral candidate Andrea Campbell is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. A member of the Boston City Council since 2016 and the first African-American woman to be president of that board. Now she wants the city's top job and she's here to make her case. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR for this Sunday morning. And as a programming note, we have a full hour of OTR for you today. You might remember that last Sunday, at this time, Tropical Storm Henri was right on our doorstep. We were in breaking news coverage on News Center 5. So because of that, the on the record program with Boston mayoral candidate Anissa Sasabi George did not air. So we will bring you that program this morning at 1130 right after this one. But right now we turn our attention to another candidate for mayor. Andrea Campbell is with us this morning, Boston born, first elected to the city council in November of 2015, representing District 4. She served as a deputy legal counsel to former Governor Deval Patrick, a graduate of Boston Latin. She holds degrees from Princeton and UCLA. Thanks for being here. Great to see us. By the way, New Center 5's political reporter Janet Wu is, is alongside, as she is. So it's great to see you, too, as well. Thank you. It's great Thank to have you, you all That was here. a lot. <laughs> that was a lot, right? <laughs> so we're, we're gonna, now you can bring a lot. It's all for you. So uh, let's dive into the number one topic that everyone in the city is still concerned about, and that's uh, masks and vaccines. Uh, you've, been call, you've been very aggressive in calling for mask and vaccine mandates. Governor Baker took it a step further, and uh, he insisted that state workers get vaccinated or potentially be fired, um, with a few exceptions, of course. Do you think Boston should be doing the same thing? I have been pushing on these issues for a long time. And I, frankly, I've been at the forefront um, ahead of every candidate, including our acting mayor. We're in a public health crisis. The city council uh, in, had sort of requiring uh, vaccinations or regular testing and masks, immediately called for the administration to do the same. This was weeks ago. Right now, that's the case, but we still have work to do with our employers, our restaurants. There's a mask requirement. I'm pushing not only for a mask requirement, but also what New York City, San Francisco is doing, which is requiring vaccinations and also vaccine passports, which we know increases the rate of people getting vaccinated, and that's what's going to save lives. Masks and vaccinations. Two questions. First of all, vaccine passports, if the state and the federal government does not provide it, is it the responsibility of the city to make sure that there are vaccine passports? And number two, should Boston do the same thing that the governor is saying with state employees that if you don't get vaccinated, you could be fired? Not regular testing. The, uh, the alternative is not necessarily uh, alternative testing. Well, I'm actually proud not only of my leadership, but the leadership of, of my council president, O'Malley. We put out a, a policy that said ma mandating vaccination or regular testing and mask wearing, push for other city employees to do the same. And I'm happy that the acting mayor and many others are following my lead. But the piece that I want us to focus on is right now in the city of Boston, there's an uptick in infections. There is still some communities like Mattapan, where I live, that have low vaccination rates. We absolutely need not only to implement a mask requirement, which which goes into effect or has gone into effect last week, but also to do what other cities are doing. These best practices around incentivizing folks to get vaccinate, vaccinated, using vaccine passports. All of this has been proven to increase vaccination rates. In New York City, they saw a 40% uptick. We want to see the same in the so city the, of Boston. So the city should offer vaccine passports if the federal and state does not? Absolutely. And I've been on the record pushing for this because I know it's going to save lives. This is not the time to be political. This is a public health crisis. And I'm hoping not only the, does, does the acting mayor follow my lead, but also the other candidates. But you're also talking about not firing, but instead regular testing for those who are not vaccinated as far as city workers are concerned. Absolutely. I, okay. Let's be clear. Our city workers are working extremely hard, and they have been since the beginning of this pandemic, making sure people are staying in their homes, responding, of course, to concerns around parents, our schools. And so we don't want to penalize. We want to make sure they're doing what's best to not only protect themselves, their families, and of course, our community. We have to take it to the next step, which is to, to offer some guidelines that are clear to our employers, restaurants, and many others. And I'm waiting on the acting mayor to do just that, and I'm going to keep pushing. And obviously, obviously, when you when you say it, it, it's not political, it, it kind of is, because we're trying to decide a mayor for the city of Boston in this in this period of time, right through this pandemic. So you have actually led the criticism of the acting mayor, Kim Janney's pandemic response, perhaps more than any other candidate. I think that's fair to say. Is she what stands between you and getting on that final ballot, getting in the final two? 
what I often stress is I'm all about transparency, integrity, and accountability. So whether it's the acting mayor who is taking steps that I do not agree with, I'm going to exercise the leadership and speak up. And unlike every other candidate in this race, I'm not afraid to lead, right? And right now we're in a public health crisis, not just COVID, but the mass and cast crisis as well. So I have been pushing for action and decisiveness. This is going to save lives. And so I'm pushing the acting mayor to implement what we're seeing in San Francisco and New York City, which we know is increasing the vaccination rates, which mm -hmm. is going to save mm -hmm. lives. And I always put the city of Boston and its residents it, first. It, it, that, that, that is one clear line because as as you just mentioned you are for the vaccine passports and the acting mayor opposes it so there's a clear line right there that's exactly right and why i'm for this is because that vaccine passports coupled with cash incentives to get folks vaccinated, coupled with masking, all of these things working together are saving lives. We're seeing it in New York City. We're seeing, seeing it in San Francisco, other cities across the country. I want it in Boston because we still have to increase the rates of vaccination in Mattapan, where I live, for right. example. And of course, so, we do not want the Delta variant to get out of control what, what, in the city of Boston. Anecdotally, what's the number one fear? What, what, what are people fearful of with the vaccine that you hear? Well, if there is hesitancy in certain communities or immigrant communities, communities of color. Trust? I've known that from the very beginning. Definitely a distrust of healthcare systems. Absolutely, when you think about the history of the healthcare system in its relationship with communities of color. So that's long-term work that we have to keep focusing on. But in the immediate, we are in a crisis. And our job is to protect not only those who can't protect themselves, children, for example. I have two boys. They are not eligible for vaccination. But our residents, and that's our jobs as elected officials, of course. So I'm going to continue to lead and to push on common sense measures the city needs to do, um, even when others are actually not taking those steps. Uh, let's talk about transportation. Although this is a relatively small amount in the overall MBTA budget, right. the system already is in dire need of funding with unreliable service, very frequent. We hear about it all the time. How soon would you make this happen if you are elected mayor? Would you, could you promise that you would make this happen within the first year? I think we can. I, I, one thing I am really serious about is when I go out into community and promise things, I want to promise things I know I can deliver on. All of my policy planks are specific, they're detailed, and they're practical, and they can happen on day one entering the mayor's office. That's a major distinction, not only between me and my council colleague, but every other candidate in this race. I'm not promising the whole T to be free. Buses, it's only $6.9 million. We have federal dollars coming in. There is an, uh, an appetite to do this equity measure because the majority of people that take buses are low-wage workers, people of color, mm -hmm. um, in certain communities that, uh, where residents exist in de transportation deserts. This is an equity initiative. And so if we do this, we can, one, respond to issues of climate and, of course, deal with uh, some of the inequities we see in certain parts of the city. So I'm promising buses, and I think we can deliver on that. The, the, there's another issue that, that, that lingers. I, I will never forget when Marty Walsh was running for mayor and walking down the street, and he was talking about housing. I'm sure housing is very important important to you as, a, as all the candidates. So it's one of the leading issues. So if it's not the issue that's facing Boston right now, so where do you differ from your opponents and how more affordable housing can be built in addition to or instead of the luxury units that are mm -hmm. popping up everywhere in the city? There are major distinctions. You know, I grew up in the city of Boston poor. We lived in public housing. We then moved into affordable housing. And now I'm a first time homeowner in Mattapan. That trajectory, I had everything it, I, it I had everything to allow me to move up. My housing plan says we can do the same for every single resident in the city of Boston. The other distinction is my record of accomplishment on this issue. My legislation was the community, my first piece of legislation was the Community Preservation Act. That's generating $20 million every year, including for affordable housing. I'm activating city owned lots for housing purposes and mixed development opportunities. There are 30 right now that are being activated along Blue Hill Ave. I didn't forget about folks living in public housing, brought in a program two years ago um, that is literally moving people out of poverty and into home ownership opportunity. So the record of accomplishment is specific. It's long. No other candidate in this race has such a substantial record on a critical issue facing our residents. And I'll continue to lead on affordable housing issues. The, these luxury units that are popping up is still a place for them in the city. I think there's always a place, and, and what I say by what I mean by that is, some have been pushing a third, a third, a third, yeah. making sure that there are communities that have not just everyone living in poverty, not everyone living in public housing, not everyone living in affordable housing. That mixed uh, model system allows for more, greater social connectivity. I had that growing up in the city in Roxbury in the South End, but we have to be mindful. We need a, more housing that is at pricing points people can afford. We need more housing for families. We need more home ownership opportunities, and that's what my plan is driving. 
thriving in what I've done as a counselor.